Good morning, everyone. As uh, you can see, I'm, I'm um, having this call from school because in Italy, we still go to school on Saturday. So it's not my free day, in fact. So I think it's, I'm the only one. But anyway, I'm here in our radio room and the colleagues could um, appreciate it when they came to, to Italy in February. So I'm trying to, to speak on behalf of my, on my school, of course. Well, what to say? We joined this uh, Erasmus project with uh, the usual enthusiasm we do. We, we put in uh, everything we, we do as a school. And in fact, this was a con natural consequence uh, of our previous experiences that go back to about 15 years ago. So we were engaged in the Comenius program in the past with several projects and then also with the students long term mobilities. And then it was quite um, easy for us and quite natural to get in um, this partnership, uh, which was um, we, which we were invited to uh, by Udo, who was already our partner together with Jenny in another past project, in a convenience uh, project about biotechnology in the past. So our school is um, quite a big school and we try to keep our students and teachers updated and uh, as, as international as possible. And so we also had uh, KA1 Erasmus programs for the um, for education and uh, formation of teachers and uh, so long term mo long mobilities for teachers too. So they benefited of uh, language uh, courses or methodology courses and job shadowing experiences. So we, we hope that this group also will be the start from new relationship among us in the future. Uh, what are the advantages we see as a school for our students and our families and our teachers, of course? Well, the main advantage for me is the huge amount of, well, this is not even, a, sorry, the disadvantage, is the, the large amount of work coordinating teachers have to do. <laughs> and I presume that all of us have experienced this. And this is... Um, to, to be faced along the normal curricular work and especially the bureaucratic side of the projects. So many paperwork, paperwork, so much paper, so much paperwork. And what else? Um, is someone sharing something? Sorry? Is someone, sh uh, Wolfgang, are you sharing something yeah, already? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just preparing yeah. everything. Just, just, yes, just but, well, you're, okay. you're taking over a space on the screen. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So I was just saying about the disadvantage. And then, of course, we have so many advantages because uh, families and students love a lot this kind of experiences. They love exchanges with other schools. They love to have um, uh, contacts uh, with the different uh, parts of, the, of, of Europe at the moment, of the world in general. Uh, what about, um, and this kind of experience, we must say that they have been the springboard for better education career and also work career in the past. We still are in contact with the, our past students who had this kind of experiences and in fact, most of them had a very, very nice uh, education career and also work career. Also because they were eager, they were more ready than others to face with um, uh, international, um, uh, let's say, academic situation and, uh, and work, uh, the work uh, situation, yes. Uh, what about, uh, well, among the disadvantages, I must say that we never face problems of lack of interest in the families or the students, even if I must say that this year, this pandemic year has given us lots of problems because we are still, most of our students are still at home, because even if the national government uh, gave the possibility to at least the 75% of the students of high school to go to school, 
our regional government has a very nice idea to give the families uh, the chance to decide if their children should or not should or not go to school. So at the moment, in the, our normal audience, which is of 1,250 students, we just have about 100 students coming at school. So we are having a kind of mixed digital teaching, which is really terrible. Also because in less than one, uh, uh, right in one month, we will have our uh, final exam for the students of the last year. Anyway, let's get, get back to our project. So uh, in Putignano, we choose to focus on goals 12, which is responsible consumption and production, because we tried to check how our local food production was, go was going as far as sustainability. Apulia is quite famous for food and wine production, you know, from special breads to tasty mozzarella cheese. So we managed to involve our students, our firms, uh, and our hosts when uh, they came here in some theoretical and practical workshop. In fact, we visited a farm, a mozzarella cheese farm. We visited um, 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 some kind of um, a farmer who produces in a sustainable in a sustainable way. And then we also uh, um, had. Uh, um, a focus on the number three goal, which is good health and well-being. And we organized surveys about waste recycling, sustainable habits before and after the COVID pandemic. In fact, you will see when we, when Wolfgang will show the, the, the um, our website that we made a similar survey in uh, February, 2020, and we made it again in uh, March, 2021, in order to check, in fact, what has changed as far as habits and as far as waste given to the situation of pandemic. For example, all these disposable masks and, what, and whatever, whatever. Okay, so normally we make a lot of promotion of the projects we do. Uh, through our social pages and also through our website. Uh, um, and we normally organize every year, we normally organize an Erasmus Day on, in October in order to promote on the local and also non, not only local area um, what we are doing as far as Erasmus. And what else? Uh, um, what was the impact of this corona crisis on us? Well, I think it was terrible because we were just lucky. We had our two first short-term mobilities within uh, mid-February last year, because in uh, other cases, we have started, for example, a new Erasmus project with other schools uh, since uh, uh, October. But being in this situation, we are just uh, meeting online, which is not really the best thing for the students at least. So, uh, as I said before, our school has been on distance learning for the 80% of the time of this school year since March 2020. So everything was much, much more difficult. And students' motivation on the activity has serious fallen down seriously, because it's not very easy to keep them engaged the whole day as far as normal curriculum and also for projects to be engaged online. Uh, well, um, we try to do, we try to, to, to do, um, to be useful to keep everyone in the same net. We are trying together to be all together still in the project but I think it's quite being quite difficult. What I should suggest, would suggest to a new school getting into the program, well, that's certainly a word experience. And I'm, let's say, quite experienced because I told you I'm, I've been engaged for about 15 years already. And so it's really an experience which gives you a lot, but be ready to work a lot with no extra money or a uh, just a little eventually. 
So be ready to be a, a volunteer, a strong volunteer. And if you believe in this, you will do. Otherwise, it's quite difficult. Uh, and I, mm, in, as far as the question about uh, um, what could we do to increase uh, the um, interest uh, in this program in Italy, for example, I just checked with the Italian Erasmus Agency and we are not facing any loss of interest. In fact, we, um, I, I could show if it's possible, but this, I don't think I can because Wolfgang is doing something, yes. Um, so we just are in the top position. So we are, uh, we are not facing any loss of interest and Italy is at the first place for candidatures as far as K2 for schools and also as far as adults education. So we are keeping on this stream and we hope to be successful again. Thank you very much. As uh, John was saying the other day, Udo told me that we might need a few words about what Erasmus is. It's part of the structural fund of the, of the Union, of the European Union. And it's one of the most important uh, chapters in the budget. I think it's doing a great job in the last, especially in the university. It's doing a great job in the last, like, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 years. Just to let you know a little bit about, uh, for those who do not know, for those who do not live in Europe. Um, as for our school, we've been working, we began with uh, Cominius in 2012. And since then we have done two projects within the Erasmus framework. Since we are in, in, in point one, I will tell you more about the sustainable development goals that we have chosen about the impact in our country in later in the, in the conference, because I think we have a uh, little time. Do I have like two, three minutes? Or maybe three, four minutes? I think I do, right? You mean now or at the end? No, I was saying that I will, mm, talk about what goals did we choose. Yeah, about sure, sure. Antonio, do you want me to share anything? Do you want me to share my screen or, or not? Mm. You want to, me to show something or do you just want to talk? Okay. Thank you, thank you. Robert. So um, I will tell you a few things about pupils, teachers, schools, parents, and uh, the community as a whole. And then a little bit about the disadvantages. Uh, I think I will repeat myself a little bit. Uh, Antonia has been saying, for example, in the, about disadvantages. I mean, she basically said what I wanted to say, but I'm sorry if I repeat myself. As for pupils, I think this uh, program contributes to expand their skills. It makes them socialize. For example, we had this pupil conference last month, and we're gonna have another one probably in June. And according to the pupils, this was really great for them it was such a great experience I mean, you give them a bit of content but then they get to meet each other i mean they were telling me the other day that now they have like four five ten friends which is the way i see it is one of the main things about erasmus you know it's really it can change your life you you may have a life-changing experience they also become multilingual which is one of the great european aims having to do with the, the structure of the union, which is a multilingual federation. As for teachers, we also expand our skills. We share good practices. And in our case, we see how well funded other countries or other regions are, which is, I mean, it's a source of joy, but also of sadness, depending on where you go, right? As for schools, uh, again, in our case, the main thing, the good thing about Erasmus is that, that we get, finally, we get good funding. We are seriously underfunded. I always tell these stories about my region and my school when we meet in person, but I mean, I have to say. Then um, the school gets connected, but this 
This also had to do with the community. You are able to establish transnational alliances, which is, I mean, that's one of the, of the SDGs, to be able to establish these transnational alliances, which are going to be extremely important because I am rather convinced that in, I don't know, maybe 50 years time, these years are going to be studied as a time of troubles, as the historians like to say. And in this context, the, the, the possibility of establishing these alliances is really, really, really important, really important. Um, about parents, which is also in the, in the guidelines we got, I think Erasmus gives parents the possibility of placing their kids better in the in the future job market. The since diversity is the key, the more languages they speak, the more able they are to learn in different contexts, live in different contexts. That is rather useful in the in the future. It's not that it's not like we must educate our pupils just to, I mean, for the job market to be competitive, but it also contributes in the in the in the future. And finally, about uh, disadvantages, you know, in our case, what you see, especially when you talk to other principals and to other teachers from other Spanish schools. Uh, a lot of our colleagues uh, complain about the lack of support from leaders, and not only from leaders, but also from um, other colleagues in school who find that uh, this learning, this not learning in the classroom, I mean, there is, there's not much room to learn outside uh, the classroom. And I mean, I, I think I, I share the thought that there's not much to be learned outside books, but there is, there's probably quite a lot to learn outside the classroom, which is a different thing. And lastly, uh, I, I wanted to share with you that the impact of Erasmus in, a, in my country and my region is really, really relevant. I mean, we have, I, I once went to a school, they were having seven Erasmus projects at the same time. And it was basically the, the, the main source of funding and the main issue that they used to attract pupils to their school. So in our country, in our region, Erasmus is really, really big. As I said before, I will tell you more about our goals and maybe more detailed impacts having to do with the activities planned and carried out in the next uh, points of the agenda, right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I so, yeah, as you know, we live in a very small town compared to some of your towns and cities. 20,000 people live in Rodez, and our school is quite big. It's about 800 pupils. And Something important is that in the past we used to we used to be involved in communities, and for many years, for maybe ten years, we did nothing. You can see uh, you can see the city, a small town in the countryside, right in the middle, and you've got fields and everything else around with cows, sheep, uh, just when you leave the, the town. So, getting in touch with European. Uh, countries, partners is very important for us, as you can imagine. And something we've been trying to, to develop is uh, the European sections. To tell you the truth, uh, we've got 800 pupils I was seeing, and today uh, we've got about half of them who are involved in European sections. Not all of them are involved in uh, Euro Erasmus Plus, but there is a great motivation for projects like this one. Uh, it is very popular with teachers. We've got a team which is getting bigger and bigger, very popular with pupils and with parents. And we are very lucky because as you don't know, because when he came in, in October, he could see that we have the full support of our headmaster, which means that uh, if there is a project, 
he will support us uh, if we need to travel to find uh, well to find teachers to find the pupils there is no problem uh, the very interesting thing with a vision shared is that it touched uh, something we were not used to to doing uh, that being sustainable and we started very slowly so now uh, we've decided to follow a specific project based obviously on the on the situation uh, sustainable in the classrooms sustainable in the canteen and uh, we started last year uh, with a garden an, an organic garden uh, which we work on uh, well every week you've got teams uh, using compost from the canteen and uh, they they go to the garden pupils who are 16 17 18 19 doesn't make any difference uh, there is not one specific level uh, of the school the three levels are involved in the project so the the main problem like all of you at the moment uh, is uh, the pandemic it is the lockdown and uh, we realized uh, there was such a big difference between teaching in classrooms and using digital teaching uh, until as you know until early november all our people uh, would come to school there was no difference uh, between june and uh, september october then decisions were taken by the government our headmaster decided that all the pupils uh, would come to school even from November, and that uh, happened until uh, April, early April. Uh, something you, you may have seen on, on the website that we've got about 250 borders, as I was saying, with the main city in a, in a rural area, and you've got many students, many people coming from small villages around us. So teaching became different difficult it was right until april when the government took new decisions so now we've got three levels at school uh, the last years uh, haven't changed they still come to school and the difference uh, the difference is uh, with the premier and the second so they have to work uh, they have to stay at home and honestly, we can see the difference. Having uh, worked with them from September until April, uh, with them in front of us, and now having such a gap uh, between their absence and their presence, I can tell you that we're facing problems with very good, excellent uh, pupils or not very good pupils who are stopping to, to work because they can cope with digital working. It's obvious. Yeah? And um, we've got more cases of pupils um, getting depressed. I don't know what it's like in Italy, in Germany, in England. Okay. Uh, in Rodez, uh, there is a, a hospital for psychiatry. And I can see that more and more they see young people uh, being uh, treated in their department okay so the project is is so important for us because it brought another aspect to the school uh, and uh, we keep on working uh, with uh, the context uh, which is um, quite difficult uh, but the motivation remains the same uh, talking about um, being known around uh, the, the county or the department, uh, the news is quite local. So yes, we can use local newspapers uh, to, to know about us because weirdly, uh, not many people in Aveyron are involved in uh, Erasmus Plus projects. Uh, so for us, it's a chance. Uh, it's a chance, as Antonio said, uh, some of our pupils went to Germany, went to Putin Daniel. Uh, they are still in touch with uh, some of your, uh, <laughs> I know that, some of your uh, pupils. And uh, 
when they came back every time, and that's one of the objects of Erasmus Plus, is to create those relationships, they were overjoyed. And there was such a frustration uh, because I know that, for example, for Putignano, uh, some boys uh, were in touch with uh, Italian girls and Spanish girls, and they had planned to meet in, in, uh, in July somewhere in Europe. And all of a sudden, everything was, well, all their dreams were destroyed for the moment at least. So that created a great movement within the group. And I think it's a very positive aspect of the project. There is the sustainability, there is the human factor, and uh, often we can keep, um, well, maintaining relationships. I know that Udo a few weeks ago, before April, had asked for a, a German pupil to come to our school. And uh, we had three students who wanted to were fighting to have her. And, uh, and that shows how important it's become for them. So socializing is working, sustainability is working. Uh, let's hope that we can keep working on that project in better condition in the- Dairag Kerno, and a good morning from a very wet Cornwall, which is quite appropriate because our, oops, sorry, photo gone by my ginger cat. Uh, our two sustainable development goals are about the water. Um, so it's appropriate that it's suddenly gone very dark in here because it's good old Cornish rain again. So um, we have been working with um, with Antonia, Antonio and Udo for many years on various projects. Um, I've been involved with Comenius and Erasmus um, in my last two schools for the last 16 years. And I suppose in a former life, Many years ago, my uh, first year in Rennes in Brittany um, as part of my degree uh, was part of those um, post-war, I suppose, plans, uh, which eventually went to Comenius and then Erasmus. Uh, and I have to personally say uh, on behalf of many of us here how um, heartbroken, I don't think it's a strong word, too strong a word, we are um, that people in, um, England, and there will be some in Cornwall have voted for us no longer to be part of um, Europe as such, and therefore not part of Erasmus. Um, and going ahead, uh, we are going to struggle to find something to replace it. However, um, I agree with so many of my colleagues today in how life-changing Erasmus and Comenius have been, uh, not just for us, but for many of our students. And for me, particularly, um, what has um, been, the, I suppose, the best part of my career is that I have been able to um, find the funding and find the um, colleagues who will work with us to allow um, very children from very um, deprived backgrounds to be able to um, change their lives through Erasmus and Comenius. Um, and sometimes um, small things like children who've never been on a train, never never left some of them the county let alone the country um, to go abroad um, a, a very short example I know we're short on time uh, one boy uh, I took to Germany many years well, many years ago probably eight years ago um, I met him a few years later for him to tell me that he was going to do a degree um, in the same university I went to but he was going to do a degree in gaming uh, which I thought had no link to German at all um, for him to tell me that the reason he'd chosen that university was because he could spend a year, his sandwich year in Berlin. So life changing for many and some have gone on to work with languages or work abroad. So um, for us, Erasmus, um, the little school that I'm in now, it's just short of 600 students uh, in the town of Foy, rhymes with boy, so you know John next time, um, is um, it's a beautiful uh, seaside port um, but a very poor area. Cornwall is one of the poorest areas actually in Europe um, but the town we're in although the town of Foy as you can see quite charming I'm sure a lot of the German colleagues watching this will recognize it from the Rosamund de Pulcher series um, and um, it is charming and as you can see it's full of holiday houses mainly English people not Cornish people, English people who are wealthy enough to own a house in our town. But our children are often from the villages, the mining villages, 
We have kaolin mined here by a French company, Imeris. Um, that's our county. You can see there the land of the saints. So we're surrounded by water almost on all four sides. That's Wasm and Apicia, just in case you're wondering, the author. Um, so um, the advantages of these projects, it really is to enable our children um, to actually see that the world is bigger than that tiny little um, peninsula that we're on. Um, the English like to think that Cornwall's at the end of England. Uh, we like to think we're, that we're at the beginning of the rest of the world. And um, so we want to open our children's uh, worlds to travel further and, and to understand um, that uh, being different and speaking a different language um, is a wonderful thing um, to make the world smaller, actually. Um, and so we make our children's worlds bigger to make the world smaller itself. Um, there are other things that come from the advantages of these projects. And um, for me, they've been numerous. Um, from Denmark, we changed our school day to have three lessons a day. Um, and that actually went countywide. Um, some of the technology that we had seen um, in Denmark meant that we eventually got to the point that we um, gave iPads to all our children, which they take home. And now in my second school that I'm, I'm in now, we've done the same thing. Now that means that during the pandemic, um, we were actually prepared in a way that a lot of schools weren't. Our children, all our lessons are online, always have been. So we teach them, but all the resources are put online. So for our children, it wasn't difficult to access that. However, as a disadvantage for Comenius, obviously it's um, been very difficult to involve our children in activities that we would normally have been able to as so many of our children needed that extra time as, as my colleagues as well in Europe um, and, and worldwide. Um, we were losing so much time from the curriculum that it's been very difficult to um, take extra time for other things. So the way we have approached it, um, I was feeling guilty before I came on to speak to you until I heard my colleagues, because I can see actually that a lot of you have approached this in a similar way. Thanks to Udo and Antonia as well with uh, promoting the links with our children still with the virtual conferences. Um, again, like Jean-Marie, I had a student yesterday say to me, oh miss, I'm still in contact with my French and Spanish friends from the last um, conference they had. So what have we done? Well, again, like Jean-Marie, um, we have started a garden uh, and a polytunnel. Um, we have also, and, and I was supposed to be keeping this quiet until you came to visit us, but because of the links with the water, with our two sustainable um, uh, development goals, so clean water and sanitation and life below water, um, we have managed to uh, get access to a training uh, boat, a sailing boat. So we were hoping to take um, the students, your students out with us uh, when they come down, um, come over. Um, but that'll be a, a little bit of time in the future, I believe. So we've also uh, just managed to secure a farm for the school. Um, the fences <laughs> went up last week. So what we've got, we've moved um, to actually involve life on land as well. So we're looking at um, how we can become more sustainable as a school. So I think what has happened for us is we've taken the project and where we can't work with the children um, as much as we would have wanted to, we've kind of taken it up into the direction of the school and are cascading it down. So those project foci that we had um, will now become an integral part of the school. So in a way, I suppose it's a, a positive thing in that all of our students will now gain access to the water. Um, we are also in the final stages of securing um, an, a water sports centre for the town um, where we were taking our students and also disadvantaged um, children from the area. Um, so we're expanding beyond the project because it's been so difficult to keep the project going in the way it would have been. Um, what else sh should I add in here? I'm sure there's loads of things. Oh yes, another thing I wanted to say. Um, and this was partly our children who wanted this. Um, our eco, eco group at school, um, which is um, largely led by children who've been involved, particularly in Germany. Some, some of them also went to Italy. Um, they wanted us to reduce our school miles. So we no longer have a canteen, which is run by an external company, but the school runs a canteen. 
And now we have local producers um, for our fruit, our vegetables, our fish, and also for our, um, our meat. Um, so that's been a, a really positive thing, both for the community and in a way promoted through the project. So I think we all have to be quite creative. Um, it's certainly not like the projects that I've had in the past because of the pandemic, but I suppose it's prompted us to make sure we are doing things and I suppose this, in a way it's got a longer life to it because the school going ahead will have a farm and will have a garden and those local producers as well. Um, so I think that's probably it from me. I've probably used up my time, John, haven't I? Maraz, okay, and Bethawila Wenick, Rag Kerno. Bye bye. Being over, thanks. Well, in fact, I share a lot of the visions. My dear colleagues and compañeros and compañeras have already presented. Wolfgang, could you go to our school section website? And I would like to start with the very last illustration about the Just Kids Festival. And I will give a little bit of input and maybe then we could use the rest of the time in contributing your ideas and wishes. Okie dokie. So to start out with, Everybody knows what it has been like. We could not go out anymore because of Corona. So we went online. We could not meet with others anymore. So we tried to make good use of the World Wide Web. Some, and I think there are quite a lot of these things. Some things were quite positive, but of course the digital way of life also did have its drawbacks and disadvantages. Homeschooling and the lockdown made pupils miss their schoolmates, their friends and buddies, probably even more than their teachers. I hope it was true. <laughs> Working with Microsoft Teams, the tool our school used for distance learning, well, Microsoft Teams, even on the very best days when everything ran smoothly, cannot compete with real teamwork, live and in person, as meeting, chatting with your schoolmates via Microsoft Teams, even if it sounds the same, will not be the same. But, and there are many buts, learning and teaching in the digital world also has its advantages, has led to insights and solutions that could hopefully, and will hopefully, be used for the transformation of teaching and education. Let me give you an example. Instead of taking a class to the cinema, and you know how difficult it might be to take a class to the cinema, to the cinema yeah? You have to get the permission, not only from your high master, also your colleagues must give you their okay, share your vision that they might learn just as much or even more by watching a movie, masterpiece, than by not missing another math class, yeah? So instead of going or not going to the cinema, you send your pupils a link to the movie you want them to watch so they can discuss it later on in an international video meeting with their partners all over Europe in the Erasmus Partner schools, yeah? Another advantage, a good example was our poetry workshop with the Munich Poetry Association, yeah? You need to find the time, you need to find a place, you need to find money, yes? And how do you manage this, that experts come to your place, yeah, and do it? Although there's a clear timetable for your pupils, they have to learn and you have to teach for the tests, so this is never an easy task, all these projects, yeah? And now they just meet once the time slot has been found, yeah? Regularly they would meet in the time span between December to April, yes? They met for five months and they could use, and they did make good use of the inputs that they got by experts 
that you would normally not have so easily in school, yeah? So more freedom, more individual time scheduling, more cooperation, more external inputs by experts. These might be some of the solutions that hopefully will not be neglected once Corona will be history and the lockdown and the homeschooling might already have maybe had some better days. So big questions, big challenges. How can our positive experiences be used so our whole school benefits from this? If you have a look at this illustration, this is an illustration of our one, one and only illustrator, Nonti, who also did all these graffiti in the two preceding meetings in Augsburg and in Putignano. Yeah? Here, I, we gave her the input that she should make it positive. You know, when you have a look at this illustration, you have these people working digitally, but it's like building a bridge. And all those, and there will be many, whoever have crossed the bridge will now say, get to another point where you look back and old school will be left behind. And you see, there's flower power on the other side, yeah? And this, this sunshine, yeah? That might even bright up the school and make it even better, yeah? And I, I've given you these two examples, sharing cinema links, sharing experts digitally. And I think these openings of the school, yeah? That might be something that we should try to work on, you know. One of our former uh, Erasmus, or in those days it was called Cominius Projects, did have the title Opening Doors to Lifelong Learning. Yeah? And, and maybe this is the idea a little bit, that the teachers, when they go to their classroom, they don't close the door behind them, yeah? but they are asked to present later on what has been going on in the classroom, yeah? So there's really an outcome of all these great plans and hopes for something like the social, uh, like the sustainable development goals, you know? So there's a great saying in Germany, which is maybe typically German, because we have a lot of administration to struggle with that. Papier ist geduldig. That means paper is patient. It is not sufficient to write something down. It is also important to produce something out of that. Yeah? There can be great curricula, but as long as there's nothing that maybe will help the pupils for lifelong learning, maybe this is not sufficient. Okay, I would like that we maybe can discuss on that with all the things we have experienced during our first meetings and in the digital world. And I hope really that soon we will meet again live and in person.